Hello, I'm Matthews Gatos here. In this video, we'll cover section 1.4, but before we do that, let's review section 1.3. In this question here, we have a culture of bacteria. We start initially with 5,000 bacteria, and the number increases by 8% every hour. So that's 8% plus the extra, that's the extra plus what I started with. So it's 108% from cycle to cycle, from term to term. So my ratio as a decimal, 1.08. I want to determine how many bacteria are present at the end of five hours. So sometimes the tricky part with this question is knowing what your number is. So is the number of terms five because it's five hours or is it a different, different number? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of sketch this out to help you guys see if it's going to be five hours or if it's going to be a different amount. Okay, so let's look at it down here. So T1 would be the start before it starts growing. So at the start, my bacteria, I have 5,000 bacteria. That's my first term. And T2, term two, is the end of the first hour or the beginning of the second. T3 is the end of two hours. T4 is at the end of four, uh, four hours. T5 at the end of four. And T6 at the end of five. So you can see at the end of five hours is actually the sixth term, making n equal to six, not five. So the end of five hours is really the beginning of six hours. So you can list it all out like that, or you can just kind of count with your fingers. So putting that all together, I'm going to have that my sixth term, t sub six, is equal to my first term, 5,000 multiplied by my ratio to the n minus 1, so to the 6 minus 1. So this would just be 5,000 multiplied by 1.08 to the exponent of 5. So let's put that into our calculator exactly like that. So 5,000 times 1.08 to the exponent of 5, and I get that my sixth term is 700 sorry, 7,346.6. You can't have 0.6 of a bacteria. I'm on my way to the 47th, but I haven't actually reached it yet. So my answer to this question would be 7,436 bacteria. So round it down, that many bacteria. Okay, so in this section here, we're going to look at arithmetic, sorry, geometric series, just like we did with arithmetic series. So we did arithmetic sequence and then series. We've now done geometric sequence. So now we're going to do the series. So a series, again, is the sum of the terms. So a geometric series is the sum of the terms, but it's in a geometric sequence. So here's an example, 1, 3, 9, 27, that's a geometric sequence. All of my terms are separated by commas, whereas 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27, that now becomes a geometric series. So I want to just kind of go over a little example here. So if I have 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32, that is a geometric series. So let's look at the parts here. So in terms of the geometric sequence, the first term is 2, the second term is 4, the third term is 8. So S sub 1 is the sum of the first term. Well, that's just the same as the first term because there's nothing to add to it. S sub 2 is the sum of the first two terms, which makes the first, sorry, second sum 6. And then S sub 3 is the sum of the first three terms. So adding those two together and I get 14. So you see the difference between terms for a sequence and sums for a series. So what I wanna do is I wanna derive a formula just like I did for arithmetic for the sum. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is talk about what a sum is in general. So a sum is the first term plus the second term plus the third term, et cetera, all the way to the end, okay? So what I know about a geometric sequence is that the sum can also be written as the first term plus 
the first term times the ratio, which is the second term, the first term times the ratio squared, which is the third term, so on to the end, which is the general term of a geometric sequence, t sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Now I want to get rid of that r to the n minus 1. So what I'm going to do is multiply each term by 1. And let me just show you why that gets rid of it. So if I multiply it by r to the 1, exponent law tells me to keep my base the same and add my exponents. So n minus 1 plus 1 just becomes r to the n. So I multiply everything including the s sub n by r. And then you can see I have t1 times the ratio, t1 times r squared, plus t1 r cubed all the way to the very end which would be t1 r to the n so i've already shown you that it's gone now so i'm going to line up this new equation with the original equation and we're going to match it up and subtract term by term so here is my r times s sub n equation right here and then i have my original s sub n equation here and I want to subtract them. So if I have r take away 1, that's just r take away 1 s sub n, and then watch what happens. There's really a 0 here that lines up. 0 take away the first term is negative first term, and then these are gone, these are gone, these are gone, etc. And all you're going to be left with is this. So you have negative t1 plus t1 times r to the exponent of n. So notice I have a common factor of t the first term, t sub 1, I'll take that out. So I'm left with negative 1 plus r to the n, just flipping that around, r to the n minus 1. Then I'll divide both sides by r minus 1, and this becomes my formula. s sub n is the first term multiplied in brackets by ratio to the n minus 1 all over ratio minus 1. So instead of me just giving you the equation, now you can see where that equation actually comes from. So let's look at that equation in a little bit more detail. So here's your first formula. S sub n is t sub 1 in blue there is your first term, multiplied by ratio in green to the exponent of n, minus 1 all over r minus 1. Obviously, r cannot equal to 1. Otherwise, you would be dividing by 0. So just like arithmetic series, there is a second formula for geometric series as well. Let's look at that. Okay, if I start with the general term of a geometric sequence, that's right there. So again, we saw to get rid of the r to the n minus 1, we can multiply both sides by r. So r times the general term is equal to, and you multiply these two together, we've already seen that those multiplied together is just r to the n. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take formula number one. So this right here is formula number one, and I'm actually going to expand it. So I'm distributing this inside the brackets. So term one times r to the n minus term one, all over r minus one. Now, we just came up with a nice expression for this right up here. And we know that this is the same as r times t to the n. So I'm going to replace that with what I just said that it was above, and this becomes our second formula. So that's where the second formula comes from. So looking at the second formula, you can take your ratio multiplied by your general term, subtract the first term, divided by r minus 1. Again, r cannot equal to 1. So that's your second formula. Let's look at those side by side. So there's the two formulas. Both the formulas, you need to know the first term and the ratio. But you're going to use formula number one when you know the number of terms. You're going to use formula number two when you know the last term. So just like we did before, always have your formulas ready, substitute in what you're given, and choose your formula accordingly. So looking at this one here, I want to find the sum of the first 15 terms. Oh, 15 terms. N is 15. So I know my first term is 2. My ratio is any term, for example, term 2, divided by the term before it, term 1, which is 3. Or I could have done 18 divided by 6 is 3, and so on. Now it goes plus dot, 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 so I don't know what my last term is, and I want to find the sum of the first 15. So based on this formula, I know I'm not using this one here because I don't know the last term. So I'm using my first formula. So sum of the first 15, it's just now a matter of substituting into my equation. So 3 to the n and then minus 1 
all over r, which is 3 minus 1. Now, when you're doing this, I want you to be really careful. This is 3 to the 15 minus 1. So when I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to do 3 to the 15, 3 to the exponent of 15. It's going to be a really big number. I'm going to write it out, but you guys don't have to. You can keep it on your calculator. And I'm subtracting 1 from this, not from the exponent. So the 1 isn't subtracting from the exponent all over 2. So I just want to be really clear on that. So I'm going to take that number, 14,348,907, subtract 1. And then notice here, the 2's cancel. 2 divided by 2 is 2. And the sum of my first 15 terms would be 100. No, that would be, let me say that number correctly, 14 million. 348,906. That would be your sum of the first 15 terms. Okay, let's try another one. So in this one here, I want to determine the sum of the terms. Uh, 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus dot 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 to 1 over 128. So because this ends, I know my end term. Okay, I can figure out my ratio by doing any term, say term 2, divided by the term before it. So that in lowest terms is a half. I know my first term is 16. I want to find my sum, and I don't know the number of terms. So since I don't know the number of terms, I cannot use my first formula, but I can use my second formula. So S sub N is my ratio of a half multiplied by my last term, subtract my first term, all divided by my ratio minus 1. So let's work this out. So 1 over, this would be 256, take away 16, all over a half take away 1 is negative a half. Okay, so let's plug this in. So I'm going to, on my calculator, I'm going to go 1 over 256, take away 16, and I'm going to put that into fraction form, which is negative 4,095 over 256, and that's divided by negative a half. So I know when I divide, it's really like multiplying by the reciprocal. So first thing I notice is I have two negatives, and two negatives make a positive, so I'll leave that over 256 multiplied by 2 over 1. So I'll just take this fraction and multiply it by 2, and then change it into fraction form, and I get that the sum of that sequence would be 4,095 over 128, which just so you know, that's about 32. I always like to kind of have an idea of what my number looks like. Okay, so those are two examples using different formulas. There's what I was trying to do, show you the full screen, okay, using two different formulas. So again, state your formulas, write out your parameters on the side, and then choose the formula that fits. I like this little cartoon, just when I was getting the hang of arithmetic sequences in the series, along comes geometric. I hope it wasn't that bad for you, I hope that that video helped. Again, I hope that video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.